before I get started, yet again, I want to uh, encourage you to watch my video. Um, it's called um, Tokenism and Tokenization Explained or something of that nature. Um, where I talk about what it is and I talk about what the issues with it and you know, stems from examples. I give you all of that. I'm about to watch this, that uh, seeing this video go around a lot. And the reason why I want to take it upon myself, because it's been shown to me and these guys making terrible uh, points. Uh, also, uh, it's an issue that I've, I, I'd say that I'd argue that I've led the charge on because I've been done videos for the last, uh, uh, extensive videos for the last about four years, uh, specifically on this this topic and ha as it relates to comic books. So this video has been going around. And I guess this is on, of course, it was on TikTok. It's where all the stupid people are. On TikTok of this this guy, um, he's responding to this comment, and this is the comment. We're going to watch it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to break down each talking point, and I'm going to say why, for the most part, it's nonsense. Uh, he said, if you, ch this is a comment that he's responding to. It says, if you change someone's original character to a different race or sexual orientation to be more inclusive, you are pandering, make original shit. Now, um, I would agree with that statement, um, that they need to make, well, that original characters are obviously more preferable. Um, uh, obviously, the tokenization is something that I spoke about so much and maybe in a different light. But the statement of what they're saying or what he's saying uh, or she or whoever made that comment is I would agree with that. So let's start with that in itself, that I agree with that statement. So let's listen to what this man has had to say. Are you tired of the wokeness of modern day comics and superhero stories? Tired of comic book companies pandering to any demographic other than the white men who re read them? OK, so they're right there. Straw man. Right at the gate. Um, and this is often why they do this sort of tongue in cheek um, sarcasm thing. Uh, often these types, because they operate on a straw man. They have to. That's the only way they can uh, sp spread their bullshit. And it semi makes sense if you're attacking someone for a position that they don't exactly have. So right at the gate, he's um, alluding to, not even alluding to, through his sarcasm, is stating that the issue is that people have uh, someone with, uh, uh, like, I guess, non-white uh, characters as well as non-white comic book readers and so forth. So, again, operating on a complete straw man. I think that's important to mention. After all, you're not racist. You just wish those pesky Negroes would learn their place. I mean, get their own original characters. If again, like, it's... That's a legitimate concern and a legitimate argument. And the tongue in cheek or the sarcasm doesn't change any of that. Right. You're not making a better argument by presenting it um, a a as such. Yes. The preference is that these characters have uh, their original like have some bit of originality to them. OK. And often the ones that we we're talking about, certainly in the tokenization sense, they don't. They are specifically based on classically white characters that we've already seen and we know about and many times have existed for decades. And what happens is, bam, they swap them, be it in sexuality, be it in race uh, or, or, or whatever. And it's not only is it lazy, it really does highlight how these types only see legitimacy in classically white characters. And I'm going to go probably expand on that uh, depending on what else this guy has to say. If you answered yes to any of those questions, I highly suggest you invest in a pooper scooper. Because you, my friend, are full of shit. Oh, oh my god, this guy's a fucking cornball. I swear if I had a nickel for every time all you motherfuckers come out the gate with this disingenuous straw man argument. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. He, he's talking about a disingenuous straw man argument. And his entire non-argument is based upon a disingenuous straw man argument. So at best, what we can say is that he's projecting. I think these guys have their own kind of villain built up in their own head that they have to attack, right? They can't even honestly uh, get into a dispute or a debate with someone on this topic matter without actually, it, well, th they wouldn't do that anyway. We've seen what happens when it happens. When I debated like the blurred without fear guy or the nerd, uh, uh, the nerdette chick, both of those guys kind of made themselves look like jackasses uh, because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Nonetheless, when you kind of criticize rather a meme, right? Something that doesn't, it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's your, it's a figment of your imagination at best, right? It's the enemy that you need to exist in order for your statements to have any sort of validity to them or them to be validated. So right there in terms of what he just said, it was a projection. 
That was a projection. I care about making original characters when it's convenient for you. Like nobody had shit to say about original characters when Bucky became Captain America. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. And this is a person that I know doesn't actually read comic books. He may have, um, uh, you know, all the branding, but I don't think he actually legitimately reads them aside from maybe some content that he can create uh, outside of it. Absolutely. A lot of people had issues with Bucky being Captain America. That's why it didn't fucking last that long. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? What are you talking about? Well, when Sam picks up the shield, all of a sudden it's a big controversy. No, it's a, it's, it's not that it's a big controversy. It's that you guys highlight it, and then some folks like myself say, well, this is a tokenized Captain America. And particularly what happened with Falcon was especially uh, criminal because Falcon was an original black character. There was nothing wrong with him. There was nothing wrong with Falcon in the way that he was. So what you did was you took one of the first black uh, 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 heroes, right, that um, didn't even have black in his name, right? He was just a Falcon. He was just an original black hero, and he was found by himself. And instead of further developing that, further expanding upon that, you thought that, hey, we're going to give him the sloppy seconds of another character that is one of the most prominent Marvel characters. That was a fundamental problem and especially criminal. Again, context matter. And if you and if you just understood or attempted to understand what the actual position was, you wouldn't make such mistakes, my man. Like I kid you not, you can have two Ant-Men, multiple Earthbound Green Lantern. You can have two Ant-Men and you can yes, you can have them. And that doesn't mean that let's say Scott Lang uh, or, or something like that is not uh, it doesn't mean that he's an original character right it doesn't mean that he's an original character because he's not you can't say that you can't say that um he, he is sam can be said for even hal jordan or the other green green lanterns that came uh um after now i will say this green lantern is a little bit of a more unique situation because uh after alan scott uh they kind of was going with this whole the green lantern is this sort of world uh, uh, galactic intergalactic police police force so it made more sense to have multiple ones that was established with the creation of how jordan that there were always going to be uh, multiple lanterns uh, so that's a little bit of a different scenario but again like i've said in the tokenization video not all tokenizations well, so i say this let me backtrack actually all tokenism is unoriginal but not all unoriginal characters are tokenized and also again there is a black green lantern that less of the people that let's say have a problem with black, uh, captain Falcon, uh, are far more, uh, fond of by the name of John Stewart. Lanterns. A whole ass family of interchangeable speedsters. Uh, again, it goes back to the simple fact that, yeah, all of those speedsters are, they, they exist, right? And just really three prominent ones. You got Jay Garrick being the first one. You have, uh, of course, Barry Allen and Wally West. And maybe depending on where you grew, when you grew up, that flash was your, fl that flash of uh, uh, your generation. However, like I said, it's, you can argue that Barry or Wally, they're not, let's say original because they're not the original flashes, but that doesn't mean they're tokenized because, well, they're all, they're all, um, uh, white and, uh, uh, male and straight. You know what I mean? And a big old flock of robins. Again, I think that the whole the robin thing, as well as the Green Lantern thing, a little bit different of a scenario, but it's still the same thing applies. When you look at the list of of robins, the, I, I've never made the argument that the the robins that came after Grayson were were original. I've never made the claim that Jason Ty was an original character. I've never made the uh, as Robin that is. I've never made the claim that uh, Tim Drake was an original character. Um, I've never made that claim. However, what I, what I have stated is that they're for all those characters that I've mentioned under their own monikers are far more preferable. Nightwing is far more uh, uh, preferable than him being a uh, Robin, though he'd be the first, he'd be the first one. So that there, there's no problem with that. Uh, but he's far still more preferable than being Nightwing or feeling as in the Batman suit same can be said for Stephanie Brown when she was robbing for a little bit but she's far more preferable as spoiler that's an original character so uh, again if, if they attempted these people attempted to try to understand the position of a lot of other people they wouldn't make these sort of mistakes and the comic book fans will eat that shit up as well they should but the second you add people of color into the equation. All of a sudden, the neckbeards are starving for original characters. Like, y'all can miss me with that bullshit. 
This guy's cringy as fuck, man. I'm actually struggling to get to it. And saying this implies that original characters of color are not being created and published all the time. Again, that's that's something that you need to tell yourself, right? Uh, uh, there are original characters. Maybe you are not knowledgeable on them or not fans of them or the people that are on the internet that love uh, tokenization or, or tokenized characters that don't actually read books or they don't show any interest in this until um, there's an actual swap because they only see legitimacy in white characters. Um, that proves the point. Hell, I, for example, the first character that we're coming out with the Riververse is an original black character. It can be done. It's not that that difficult, but you do have to have some sort of creativity um, as opposed to, I don't know, just changing a character that already exists and having them be a new race. Which you would know if you actually gave a shit about original minority characters. Again, that is a projection. Um, I don't think these guys give a shit about original min minority characters. So they insist that their enemies or the people that they think are their social political enemies have the same position. And it's no. Like, I prefer black original characters as opposed to the ones that are tokenized. I've talked about this. You've seen many of them on my wall. I've done multiple videos, for example, um, about for both main comics in black characters that they should expand upon. Like, I made a whole video complaining about the lack of buzz for DC's new Milestone Returns in and, and and you know why there was a lack of buzz for the again context matters guys this is so easily debunkable the reason why there was so uh not as much buzz um is because once the milestone came deal came out and they were so hyper emphasizing all of this racial bullshit to the point to where they changed statics origin the person that you're showing right now they changed his fucking origin to be part of some corny ass black lives matter uh, uh protest and that was how let's say he ended up getting his powers Nobody's going to be interested in that. You get shit hack writers, Vita Ayala, and people that nobody's interested in. We want further away from these books. Yeah, nobody's going to be interested in the brand, and it's going to be dead on arrival because you're still having the same sort of issue. Well, yeah, you have hack writers, hack uh, uh, people that con you know, he's come up with these sort of hack concepts that are now in control. So, yeah, we would have been more uh, maybe fond of that and more excited for it if you had a team of people uh, and, and you, it wasn't so painfully obvious that you were going to be doing all of this nonsensical social justice bullshit. They would have been far more interested, certainly, uh, in that. But they weren't. Of course, it wasn't going to get any buzz when, when we find out immediately. Immediately. Like, as soon as the shit basically hits the shelves, Milestone Zero shit, and we find out that Static's fucking origin gets completely changed, of course, we're not going to be interested in that. At the DC fandom, I was the one of the ones that said, oh, they're coming back uh, with, a, uh, with this whole uh, Milestone thing. That's far more preferable than what anything they've been doing. Then we find out who's going to be a part of the projects. Then we find out what they're doing to characters like Static, and we're like, ah, no, not interested. Like, Static is one of the most influential new characters that DC has made in the last 30 years. And I don't hear none of y'all fools talking about his new series. Again, it's a very easy thing. If you understood what issues people had with modern comic books, you could easily understand why folks aren't interested in the new Static series. It's not a difficult concept to understand, but it just will require you to actually listen. It will require you to actually engage in honest conversation with the people that you think are on the contrary. But you guys don't do that. So what you do is you form a boogeyman. You, you form a person you think that we have to be, that we have to be in order for your positions to be true. You make you're making up a person that is not representative of really the comic book fans at large, especially those like myself who are really the go to when it comes to this topic matter. I think most folks would agree uh, certainly is that it's my videos that generally pop up when you look up tokenization and, and so forth for, for various reasons, because that's been something that I've talked about extensively. But what you will do is make 75 page essays on why Tim Fox doesn't deserve to be the Batman of the future. He doesn't. There should be another. There shouldn't even be another Batman. Um, and I, yeah, I, I think, and I've talked about how even Batman Beyond aged. Like, if you actually watch that as an adult, it's it's not good. <laughs> that shit aged terribly. Nonetheless, yeah, he's he's black Batman. Not interested. Not interested. Without even having read the story for yourself, while praising Terry McGinnis from Batman Beyond for being literally the exact same thing. Again, if you understood the argument you could easily understand why this is a problem, right? 
there's also this form of line skipping, line skipping that you completely miss, right? And that the folks that care the most about the original characters that are, let's say, black, for example, in this context, are going to be the people that are most critical of these ideas. Why? Because it's a form of line skipping. You get the sloppy seconds of like, let's say, a character like Batman. And instead of developing, let's say, um, original characters, they that they, they think that suffice. They, they think that th that's OK. They think that's generally a good thing. And therefore, what ends up happening is that they don't generally expand upon these sort of uh, uh, black characters that don't end up catching on. Or, again, it's, it's, it's two situations that you have to consider. It's not that they're just not being expanded upon. It's that when they also are like you get what you get what you get with milestone you get uh this sort of corny writing and and the reason being is not only they're just not creative that's also things that they just simply don't know how to write these characters one thing that i bring up all the time about white characters and i've said this before many 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 instances white characters have the benefit of having white male characters specifically have the benefit of having no actual social ill to fall back on. And what that means is that instead of focusing on things such as race or sexuality or gender, which is uh, often what gets focused on for characters that fit a bill that aren't white, straight and male, they are forced as creators. And that doesn't mean it's always successful. There's been some trash white straight characters and plenty of them and trash white uh, trash stories on, based upon white male straight characters that have caught on. But when you have to focus on nothing but that, the character itself, you tend to produce better outcomes. And that's often what you get. There's no social ill to fall back on. They can't go back blackity black, 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 black. They can't do that, right? There's no, uh, uh, no form of oppression or all this other so, sort of uh, uh, stuff that they have to try to fall back on and they always often fall back on with other black characters, which is why a lot of them don't catch on. Because we've seen that, right? We've seen that. This is why I'm going to show you how it's done. It's not that difficult, but we've seen that. If a character is black and he's legitimate and he's good and he's thought out, even if they have like a, 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 a reboot or a change, such as like what you got with Blade, right? Nobody gives a fuck if he's black, right? It's because, and, and, and as in by nobody gives a fuck, I mean, people will support him no matter if they're white, black, whatever they are, as long as the character is decent. But if you hyperemphasize, for example, racial aspects or or other concepts, then yeah, it's gonna we've seen that so many times, specifically with these black characters, that is boring. Right? If you led with creativity and creativity alone, not oh hey, what if Batman was black? If you led with creativity and creativity alone, a lot more of them would hit. But you don't know how to do that because they're not creative. Now, I'm not saying you're racist for not liking every single change to pre-existing comic book characters, but I have no respect for people who judge changes like this based on the race of the character involved instead of the merit of the story they're trying to tell. Well, again, there is no merit in the story because it's fucking dog shit. Also, that was what they bragged about, right? Don't get mad at other people for specifically highlighting what they bragged about with this being a black that was what they led with, Black Batman. If you watched the DC fandom when it was first kind of alluded to and announced, when you had Jim Lee uh, 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 talking about this, you know, D the first DC fandom was just tokenization galore. That's all they cared about, diversity, inclusion, representation. And that's what they led with. Oh, we got a Black Batman coming. Of course. What are you talking about? If they lead with it, the, well, imagine that. Imagine that. They lead with it. They lead with it. And then you bring it up. And you, 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 you talk about what they're emphasizing and now you the problem that ain't my fault especially because the majority of the snowflakes complaining about this shit can't even be bothered to read the stories that they're complaining about again that is a projection that is a projection you don't read those stories and a lot of folks that champion these ideas don't read them you know why it's indicative and knowing how we know that it's indicative in their comic book sales you don't read these stories Y'all like the ideas of these characters and don't read their story. There's a reason why Miles Morales, they don't know what the fuck to do with them in the comic books because his books sell like shit. So the people that they attempt to appeal to appeal to aren't comic book fans because the comic book fans have rejected this. They don't want it. They're not interested. So long. I was the only person that was reading these shit comics.
probably the only person that had a pull. I feel like I was the only person in America that had a DC or Marvel comic pull list <laughs> for a while there. <laughs> because they were terrible and I don't blame you at all. That's why I try to judge changes like these on a case by case basis. Well, again, you could do that all you all you want. I've said before, and I think many people agree with me, all tokenizations aren't equal. Okay. Some tokenizations are more preferable than others. I've said She-Hulk to me is the greatest tokenized character that ever exists in my mainstream comic books. I've said that Batgirl is far more preferable uh, for a tokenized character if we're talking about uh, tokenized uh, characters. But all of them are unequal. And a lot of them and most of them are dead on arrival and should be, especially in the modern age, because I think context is important. And yeah, it may have been a little more understandable back in the gap. You didn't have social media. You couldn't have a click of a button and have a story out there. They have that power right now. Right. They have that power. They don't even have to spend millions upon millions of dollars for advertising. They can just post it on Twitter and bam, it can, it can hit or it can not. So especially now, it's especially lazy for us to see tokenizations instead of development of original characters. This is such an easy thing to explain. Because there's no logical reason why we can't have both original characters and reimagine. No, um, uh, I'd rather have original characters. And definitely when you come to, when you're talking about the the um, like DCs and Marvels, there's especially no excuse for them to do it because they got all the fucking money and resources to, to put into marketing. Why do we have to accept both? And that, that's a question that I used to we can imagine we can have these reimaginings. Why? Why do I have to accept or why do I, I want to have to embrace sloppy seconds? Why? 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 Because reasons? And to those of you typing in the comments right now, oh, but if you made a white Black Panther, I already have multiple videos debunking that. So suck my dick. Okay, that, again, that guy is one of the most cringiest motherfuckers that I've seen. And to be fair, if he ever wanted to have like sort of a live dispute about this topic matter, because apparently he's a creator, um, yeah, we can do that as well. Um, I don't think this guy's actually equipped to have this conversation, if I can be completely honest. But, um, but yeah, people would be upset if you had a white black, uh, a white back Black Panther, and I'm not talking about some white fox shit. I'm talking about like a legitimately. Uh, and it could happen. It actually uh, could happen if they wanted to make it happen, considering specifically that the, how they built the whole m Black Panther thing was a mantle. Would I prefer that? No. Would I talk shit about it? Of course I would, because I don't want that shit. Goofy. Uh, but yes, people would be mad and rightfully so. But what they generally like to appeal to, and I, don't, I haven't seen this guy's video, I don't know. I have no idea. I've not seen this guy's video, so I don't know what he's talking about. But a lot of people who do bring this up talk about, well, it's uh, race is integral to the character. All right. So it wouldn't make sense for a white character to be Black Panther when, yes, there are white Africans, right? Are there not? There's white people that are born and raised in Africa. Are there not? Um, so, yeah, there absolutely could be a white fucking uh, Black Panther. Again, it will make actually most sense for that character in comparison to others because of how this whole uh, Black being the Black Panther is more, has been more of a mantle. So they could do that, and it would make sense, and it would be in line with what exists right now in the real world. It could happen. Would I prefer that it happened? Absolutely not. Do I want it to happen? Absolutely not. Would I talk shit about it if it happened? Absolutely yes. It's a non-point. If any original black character that was changed, remember, this is how it works, right? Oh, every single black character, his race is integral to them, basically, for the most part. Uh, but it would be goofy. It's a simple thing to understand, and this is why I continue to tell people stop falling for this nostalgia bait. If you have to, if you are being nostalgia baited, go buy back back issues. Not even trade paperbacks, not reprints. Just go buy back issues. They all exist. But cool, we gonna show these guys how it's done, right? And I'm gonna speak this shit into existence. Though I can't do that, I'm gonna do it. I think by the end of 2020, I'm gonna have the uh, 2020. Uh, excuse me, 2020, 20, uh, 2022. Shit. Why was it so difficult to say? I'm going to be in possession of, uh, in the modern era, one of the most prominent black characters. And he's going to be completely original. Watch me do it. You just watched a clip from my podcast, For Canon Sake. Catch us live at 12 p.m. throughout the week over at youtube.com slash youngripper59. And follow us over at odyssey.com slash at youngripper59. If you want to watch the entire video cast after the show is over, just be sure to become a member 
on the YouTube channel. Of course, the full audio portion of the podcast is available for free on all major digital platforms or just visit forcanonsake.com.